Hi everyone, Amy here with Amy's Wares and today I'm going to show you an easy quick batch option for some holiday cards. Now this is the special October mid-month release. It is called Playful Tree, super fun and when I saw it I immediately thought oh this is one that I can quickly batch for some holiday cards. I have some mini ink pads from Catherine Pooler and I also have the brand new Spread Love stamp set which is part of the October release. Now here's a couple photos of the finished cards. You can see I was able to make five of them um, and I did this really quickly. Um, you may have seen I do have some videos that are you know five and ten where I'll make five cards in ten minutes or less. I didn't feel like timing myself but I can tell you it's still pretty much quick like this. So I basically come up with a design that's usually single layer. Um, I can work right on a card base and it's quick and simple enough that I can create a batch pretty quickly. And I know many of us need those for our holiday cards. So here I'm just kind of using the bottom of the tree trunk to line up on the bottom of my card base and I have it just kicked off slightly off the left side of the card. The reason I'm lining it up like this is because I know ultimately I'm going to put my stamp in the same place and I want it to work on every one of these cards that I batch. So there's just a little tiny bit off the top that's not um, covered by the stencil. So I masked it off with some two inch post-it tape and I'm grabbing a smattering of these party collection colors. Um, I believe I have Tiara, Lime Ricky, Aquatini, Something Borrowed, and Flirty Fuchsia. So these are really bright, obviously non-traditional Christmas colors, but I enjoy them. And I love stencils like this where I can just quickly come up with a design that's colorful. Yeah, I still have a lot of white space for a clean and simple card. And then I can just line up a stamp and then just kind of, you know production line, crank out a bunch of cards. So I'm working down, starting at yellow for the star on the top, and then Lime Ricky coming in with Aquatini, and then with the Something Borrowed and Flirty Fuchsia. And this is what I'm actually going to do for all five cards. I won't keep you here all day by showing you all five cards, but you can see this is actually pretty close to real time. I don't even know if I have this sped up at all. If I do, it's just the tiniest little bit. So you can see this does not take long at all to kind of crank out a card with this simple design. And that's the beauty of a creative and simple stencil like this. This is why I'm so in love with these stencils and I come back time and time again. Um, Mary Kay at the shop comes up with just the greatest designs for cards that I don't know, they're just simple yet beautiful, which is totally my jam. So here I'm coming back in. I felt like it was a little bit light in that spot. But this is the design I did for all five cards, and I tried to line them up almost exactly on all of them so that I just have to load that stamp up in my Mini Misty one time, and then I can just you know crank it out and stamp the same sentiment on all of them. So I have my Mini Misty here. I'm just going to take out my little stick mat from scrapbook.com, and I'm going to line this up right in the bottom corner and then I'm going to take this uh, Christmas stamp from the spread love stamp and then line that up right in that nice white opening as if it were made for it on this card and this will be nice and flat easy to ship um, no extra postage needed come you know Christmas time because I know you guys are probably sending out a bunch of these like me so I wanted to make sure it was really easy to ship and I'm just kind of lining this up this the stamp itself is a little bit diagonal so I'm kind of going with that playful whimsy design and figuring out where I'm going to put it exactly on the card. <clears throat> this was obviously <laughs> the fussiest bit of the process because I wasn't sure how it was going to look. So you'll see in a moment, I, I'm going to pick up the stamp with my misty lid, but I'm actually going to test stamp it down on some acetate. So if you aren't sure how it's going to look and you don't want to ruin your project or risk ruining your project, then just throw down some plastic packaging or a little piece of acetate and try stamping directly on that. And then you can really gauge whether it looks the way you want it to. Because sometimes, you know, compositions can look a little funky if you put it in the wrong place. And I was really not sure once I started to line this up in the space if it was going to look right. So at the very last minute, I decided to not risk it and put down this piece of acetate. So you can see once I'm done fiddling off screen, I'm just going to put this down under my magnet and then I'm going to stamp on this acetate instead of stamping on the cardstock. And then you can see 
yep, this works. So I'm just going to wipe off this acetate with my stamp chamois, and then I can go and stamp all five of these cards really quickly because it will line up perfectly on um, each one of them that I ink blended on. So I'm going to come back in with the flirty fuchsia and stamp this one more time and then stamp it down directly onto the card base. I think I got a fingerprint smudge on here probably. I was making making a mess um, with these juicy ink pads. I have my mono sand eraser. I'm just gonna kind of take the little top bit of the paper off to make it not so visible. So this is, you know, possibly a blingage moment if you got a big fingerprint you can't get off or definitely have one of those mono sand erasers on hand because they're a game changer. So I'm just very gently tapping. I'm trying to get a good even impression the first time because if you've worked with Catherine Pooler inks before, they're a dye ink and they'll get darker every time you stamp them because it's really just getting sucked into that cardstock. And I didn't want it to be too dark. It's already gonna be a little bit darker than your ink blending because that's just the nature of stamping. It's gonna be a lot more concentrated. So I really didn't wanna have to pounce it down more than once because I didn't want the Merry Christmas to get too dark in the design. So here you can see I'm just going to work through all five cards. I'm using my press tool from Tailored Expressions just to put some even pressure along that. You don't want to press too hard when you're working with word stamps because you don't want it to splay out and kind of smush um, the lines of the sentiment. So this press tool is really handy in that way. Um, there's all sorts of variations of that on the market. Sorry for that alarm going off in the background. Um, but I'm just going to work through all five cards, and then you'll see I do add um, another little element just to give it a little something else because it is pretty simple. But this is real time. You can see it did not take me long at all, and I'm going to have five more cards to add to my Christmas card stash. So I think I'm finally on the last one here. I did realize one of them, the card bases, was a inexpensive white cardstock that usually my daughter uses. So I'm not sure how that card base got in there, but um, oh well, it still worked. It was the right size. Now here you can see this is my corner chomper tool. There's a quarter inch side and a half inch side. And I'm just gonna round the one corner just to give it a little something extra. I felt like the design needed something different. So it's a very simple design. Um, like I said, it's nice and flat. It'll be easy to ship, but I wanted to give it a little something else interesting. And this didn't take any time at all. Just rounded the one corner and there's those five cards ready to go. And here you can see I added a little bit of blingage. <clears throat> this is the only dimension. It's just a iridescent white or maybe I can't tell if it's clear or white, either iridescent clear or iridescent white sequin, put them in odd numbers across the card and that's going to finish that. So I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing. I have lots of other holiday or Christmas card batching ideas, so be sure to check those out and I'll catch you next time. Thanks.